Hello, folks. Future Exile here. So, uh, like, an, like a moron last night, when I was finished and I had uploaded everything to Patreon and all that kind of stuff, I deleted the video because I wanted to save some space on my hard drive. Hooray! So I'm going to record it again from here, and hopefully you can see it and everything's good. So, I will shut up now and start recording. Love you all a long time. See you later. Hello folks, welcome to a new week. We are on the Monday, I hope you all had a wonderful weekend, and if you were working this weekend, thank you very much for keeping the world going round. We all are thinking of you when you're there, working whilst we get some time off. If you like what I do, the subscribe button is down below, you can really help me out by clicking that button if you haven't done so before. And if you really like what I do, then head over to Composite Games to get yourself some models. Whenever you do get some models, use the promo code Northern Exile down below to get yourself 5% off at checkout and all that fun stuff. My Patreon is also down below if you want to buy me a pint. And also, the Discord is down below. It is free. It is a great resource for people to come in, have some fun, you know, get some, get a little mental health boost. You know, all down there, all free, all for you. Go for it. Right. This is Games Workshop Stories, and this is the first one that we've done in a while that's been more, shall we say, focused on a an ex-employee actually giving me a story of theirs, rather than just, just things that have gone on in the past, you know? So, when was the last time we did a GW Stories? I think it was quite, quite long ago, wasn't it? I think it was, like two weeks ago. Three weeks ago, maybe. Oh my god. Yeah, so, it's been a while. Um, I tend to, like put on the back burner a lot of these because some of the stories that I get I'm able to talk to these guys a lot more often because obviously the WhatsApp group and stuff so if I get a story that isn't quite right for the channel I'll just tell them straight away and then when I do get one that I get in a bullet point form I'll say yes please tell me about that and then they will go and write it and come back so it takes a lot longer than a normal hobby nightmare to be honest with you to come to, come to me to be honest but then there we go so Metrolax says uh, Yo North, hey man, uh, took a while to write this one down, but I wanted to touch base with you for a bit before I sent it. Some of the more extreme things in this I left out, so, as I don't want anyone being identified. Some of my experiences are common knowledge with Summit Games Workshop as urban legends, I guess you could say. Always a good way to start it off. Alright, in the past you have spoken about how trainers can make or break your Games Workshop career. And I have to say, this is completely accurate as far as I'm concerned. I've had three trainers during my time at Games Workshop, two of which will be described in this video. I left for a job in the US in Santa Monica that I love these days. I used my, game, my time at Games Workshop to pay for my course in games development, so safe to say, I got the job I wanted in the end. It's always good when, like, there's a nice happy ending, so thank you very much for that. And congrats on getting your job. That's awesome. When I first came to Games Workshop, I kind of look, uh, look at this thing now as a false dawn for me. It was the first time I came into a job thinking, yeah, this is it. This is me. I was recruited through the management pipeline program after being a store helper. Basically, I was a body that comes in and helps the manager in busy periods or who covers the store when he is off. I proved myself there, applied for a management training job, was in the pipeline and eventually got got given my chance. The normal route. Yeah, I'm not sure if they still do that, but that was the normal route for me as well. So I started as a normal um, staffer, uh, became a ma uh, applied to be in the management pipeline, then became a manager after that. Anyway, my first trainer was a top guy. I walked around the HQ with him and met folks, had some fun, and was made to feel quite special, to be honest. Kind of like I was his pet project or something. Ah, that's always nice. Always nice when you get somebody who's got your corner, man. In a weird way, though, it kind of felt like I was joining a new school, if you know what I mean. Um, let me read on for a minute before I, I answer that. Like I'd go into the cafeteria for the staff, and everyone would be talking to each other and laughing like old friends. I'd sit at a table, and things would go quiet. Now, I know these are, at heart, nerds. They won't react well to new people they don't, kn they don't know unless you make the effort. So I did. Some responded, and some didn't. I clearly was not going to make it into any of these cliques in one day. Okay. So, yeah, I do get that feeling. Um, that feeling never left for me. Like, as a guy. I, I, this is North talking. That feeling never really left. So, 
most of the time I would be um, in a training session or talking to people or um, I would always get the sense that I was throwing in with people who had known each other for years. Do you know what I mean? So I was coming in on the back foot a lot of the time. Mm. Like the only people who made me like feel that like that wasn't the case were the Scottish managers. And that's because, let's be honest, most of the time they were drunk. But at the same time, I mean, they still made the effort. So, you know, it's one of those. The problem is, these cliques never went away, and I found myself perpetually on the outside of them. After my training and getting my store things, uh, getting my store, things were going really well. I was having fun in the store and started running a campaign that involved purchases working people up a leaderboard. Ooh, that is controversial, man. Because that's like pay to win. That's pay to win. We don't like that in gaming. So why would we, why would we like it in a Games Workshop store? Uh, not sure how I feel about that one. The more you spent, the more points you'd have to purchase special abilities to use in the campaign games. Oh, orbital strikes and things like that. Oh, you dirty little dog. Shouldn't be doing things like that. I'd also give uh, points for good behaviour. Is, is one of those good behaviours buying stuff? <laughs> One of those good behaviours is keeping me in a job. Uh, no. I'd also give points for good behaviour. Like teaching somebody to feather paint swords. Running an intro game for someone new on the main table. Getting a white dwarf for a friend who had a bad day. That kind of thing. Oh, okay. That, now, now, that I agree with. That I agree with. That's good. That's good shit. I like that. Um... And I kind of like that the fact that you've got a gamey one, so if you just want points in the game, you can spend money, and if you just want to do nice things with people, you can gain money. All right, yeah, all right, I'm with you on that one. I'm with you on that one. It was going off the rails there for a minute there, because I thought you were just going to be like, spend money or you're not going to win the tournament. You know, it, it would have been a bit bit lame. But no, I, I get what you're doing. That's fine. As long as you make sure you give more points out for people being nice in the store than you do for them purchasing stuff. Do you know what I mean? So, like... Out, you, you're you liberally giving those points out more to people who are being nice in the store than you are, you know, people spending money. Anyway. It was a blast, and weirdly, Dark Eldar with the big dudes in the campaign. As the Dark Eldar player in the store, Steve, was equally minted and probably one of the nicest blokes I've ever met, and I mean that sincerely. This bloke could not do enough for everybody around him. I later found out that he lost his kids and wife... In a bad car accident about 10 years before this. Oh, which explains a lot why he was so determined that kids especially were safe and had fun in the store. Yeah, I've said this before. About uh, when I went to the States. Um, I thought like Joe Biden was a bit of a meme, you know. And, you know, it was just fun making fun of him, essentially. But at the same time, um, my missus at the time, she told me why he was like very cuddly with kids. I always thought that, that was really weird, and the, the media picked up on it, saying it was weird. Um, he had something similar. I, I think one of his kids died in a car accident. Don't quote me, but uh, maybe go on Google and, and look for it. But, like, yeah, he, he's, he's like, he, he, he finds them really precious these days, because he's like, oh, my God, I lost mine, you know, in a bad... It might have been a plane accident or something, I can't remember. But, yeah, similar, similar. Uh, so, yeah, that, that, that put a whole new spin on that for me, so I was like, oh, yeah, I'm not going to judge him for that anymore, because I would be probably the same way, be like, oh, protect... Must protect, you know. Um, so well done to this, Steve. Um, that that's that's horrible, man. That's horrible. I can only imagine like the, the pain that you go through, especially as a dad. You know, cause I know it's quite a sexist thing, but you know, you're meant to protect your kids and your wife as a dad, and and it's not your fault. But if they all get wiped out in a car crash, that they would be. It doesn't matter how good of a guy you are, you'd still feel the guilt. You'd still feel like I should have done something to protect them. You know, that's just male guilt. That's just what we have. It just it's just there. You know, and any of you saying you wouldn't feel guilt, you're either sociopathic or you're lying to yourself. Because as a dad, you would. I am a dad, and I would, even if it was not my fault. I, God forbid, God forbid, a meteor comes down and wipes out, you know, part of the city where my daughter is tonight. Right? I would still feel bad, and then I could have stopped that some way. I could have stopped that somehow, if it was me. You know what I mean? Um, it's just dad guilt. Yeah, I, I, I completely with him. I get what he means. Um, I caught him more than once walking away from giving an intro game to a kid with a tear in his eye. Oh, no. Oh, top guy. He was also an employment lawyer. This will come up later. Ooh, okay.
Okay, plot thickens. When I went to training, uh, what? Well, sorry, when I went to training groups across the country, the cliques I talked about earlier were in there on full display, totally. Most discussions I was frozen out of as the new guy earlier on. I was expected to sit there silently and just listen. When I dared input something, even if it was extremely benign and along the lines of what they were already suggesting, the other managers and trainers would look at me as if I had grown another head or something. The thing is, treat me this way and I will give it to you back. That's just how I was raised. And so, I was stuck in this toxic spiral of them treating me like shit as the new guy, me treating them with disdain for doing this, and around and around we go. Okay, cool. My sole piece of defence was my trainer. He would step in when I had some feedback and would have a laugh with me that, that really helped me get ingratiated into the groups. In fact, he was the one uh, to tell me not to get disheartened by the cliques. Eventually, they would open up to me. Not an issue for me if, if it's other staff. My fear was that other trainers were like this as well. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it sucks, man, but... I mean... Every job is like this, right? Every job is like this. Every job I've ever been in has been like this, where you go in, and if, if you're at, like, group training or something, it's going to take you a while to get ingratiated and to be happy there and to, and to know what you're doing. The thing is, other companies are held to a much higher standard of behavioral practice than Games Workshop are. That's just... It is what it is, right? Every game development studio I, I've been able to, to sit in on Every publishing company I've been able to sit in on when they're doing training, things like that. Every school I've been to. Everything I've ever done where we've been sitting there in a corporate environment doing training or, you know, brainstorming ideas for things. Have people go out of their way to give you time to speak and they will they will smile and nod and be like, okay, that's cool. Yeah, what else? What else have you got? Blah, blah, blah. And they will really want to know what you have to say. Right? Uh, Games Workshop was one of the only companies where this wasn't the case. It was very much like you were around a group of friends discussing a D&D &D campaign and you had just turned up. So if you just turn up to a new D&D &D campaign, you know, uh, you, you're not going to want to put your ideas out there straight away because you want to like sit there and you're the new guy, right? So you want to sit there and ingratiate yourself first and then have a talk. That's exactly what it was like at King's Workshop, but more extreme. Uh, this guy didn't sound like he was ever let in. Eventually, I kind of was, but wasn't really. You know, it was like one of them, you know, my ideas were just thrown out or stolen. My, idea, my ideas were just stolen and thrown back at me in, in slightly, slightly worded differently. And they would get a round of applause. Um, you know, that kind of a thing. But yeah, Games Workshop is probably, of all the companies I've ever worked for or even been a part of as a guest for a day or whatever, as a, in publishing and stuff, um, they're the most unprofessional group in terms of this. It is very cliquey, it is very, these groups have known each other for ages and how dare you come in and try and spoil their good time by having an opinion on things. Even if it's an opinion that agrees with them, you know what I mean? You're just not popular, you're not one of the cool kids, shut up, you know, and, and ju just accept how cool we are rather than anything else. That was exactly how it was. Anyway, um, after a while of going to these, uh, to these training get togethers once in a while or twice a year, it became pretty clear that I was not a good fit with other managers or trainers. I'd try and talk to people there, but would be shut down. My ideas lightly mocked, and after a while, I just kind of gave up and started treating them and their training with apathy. Contact with head office, weirdly, stopped. They used to call me once a week just to see how I was, but that ended. I never got that. I never got that. What's all this about? You're getting calls just to see if you're okay. That would have been nice. Yeah, they used to call us once, call me once a week just to see how I was, but that ended. I figured they just left me to it, as I'd been there a while at this point. Then my trainer changed and was moved to a different person. Again, I just figured this was because he handled new folks, and to be honest, I'd been there a while, as I just said. My new trainer was one from our sessions, and oh boy, did we not get on. He would come in and just start moving things around in my store to fit with some sort of plan he'd gotten from HQ. A plan he neither shared with or explained to me. When I would talk to other customers, he would nitpick, literally shouting at me in front of a customer for having one hand in my pocket at this point. What? 
Okay. So what are you supposed to do? Stand there with your arms out and like to your sides like a robot? It's right. that's really off putting. This went on at least once a month. He'd come in, ruin my day, and leave. <laughs> He'd even talk to me about losing customers with my attitude while sitting in the middle of a busy store on a Wednesday night. <laughs> yeah, Wednesday nights are supposed to be quite quiet. Because your gaming night's supposed to be on a Thursday. So if it's busy on a Wednesday, the store's doing quite well. So he's like, yeah, you're losing customers with your attitude. And you're just like pointing around at like the 50 people in there. Like, uh, alrighty. If this is what losing customers is, I should probably carry on doing it. He would also sit at the painting introduction table and not move. Meaning I couldn't use it for intros, which pissed me off. Wow, yeah. Yeah. Our big blowout came when he brought that up, saying I was not giving introduction painting sessions and that this was simply not acceptable. He'd been there for two days at this point and not seen me give one intro painting session. I pointed out to this lard ass. <laughs> Sorry, that just tickled me. I, I pointed out to this lard ass that he, arri that he har had arrived and put his bags, books, and all sorts of other shit at, at that table, and perched himself there all day, as the rest of the store was always busy. So, maybe keep that space free, and put your stuff in the back with mine, and people wouldn't feel so intimidated by the big slovenly fat guy in the Warhammer t-shirt, sitting at the painting table with a face like a smacked ass. <laughs> oh... I bet you that went down well. He crumpled a sign-in sheet in his hand and said, So, it's my fault that you're not doing painting intros. A key part of your role here. Okay, noted. He said it in quite a nice but, you know, unfriendly way, if you know what I mean. Yeah, so he's like, he's acquiescing to your point. But, like, he's letting you know that he's noted, like, you know, what you're, what you're doing. Okay, fair enough. You know, that seems to be a common tactic. I've seen that now. I've seen that... I think one of the first things I, e I ever read on the channel from somebody else who, who was uh, to do with Games Workshop had something similar, where where the, the trainer like repeated back what you were saying as if it was like this cardinal sin, and then goes, I've made a note of that. Do you know what I mean? I swear that happened to me as well. I can't pinpoint it, because I've, I've put it away in my mind somewhere, um, mainly through therapy. Um, but like, uh, it's in my little box of things I don't want to think about. But like, yeah, I, I swear to God that's a common tactic that they're trained to do. I swear. Like, like, like it's something that they're trained to do. That they, they, they say your idea like it's a bad thing, and then they go, noted. Or they go, yeah, I'm making a definite... You know, I'm letting you know that I know you said that sort of a thing. Yeah, horrible. Anyway. Yeah, from here, we were pretty much done. Yeah, sounds like it, mate. When on another day, I had Steve in the, uh, in the door... I'd Steve in the door with the back in 30 minutes sign on the door as I was having my lunch and he did some painting. Fair enough, yeah. I, I used to do that as well with a few customers. If I trusted them, they would be in the store with me while my lunch was on. My trainer turns up as he was in the area, walks in, shouts at me for eating my lunch in full view of the windows of the store. I just pick up my sandwich silently and head into the back like a scolded child, as you do. My God, man. Just leave. Ugh. When I head back out of out, the trainer is gone, and Steve asks to have a word. He tells me that what he just saw was completely unacceptable, and that I should either stick out the job there, and when they eventually sack me, take them to court for unfair dismissal, constructive dismissal, or hand in my notice. Those are my two options to keep my sanity, in his opinion. He'd been noting things down for weeks that he'd seen, Phone calls from the trainer and others at HQ, basically calling into question anything I ordered or did. The way I was spoken to by Games Workshop people in the store. He had a file all ready to go, literally there and then, in his bag. Wow. It was mental. At this point, I was about to graduate from my degree, so was thinking of quitting anyway, but this kind of pushed me over the edge. Like when someone else sees how you are treated, it kind of pulls the curtains from your eyes. Um, I'm gonna 
jump in there because I I kind of um so uh, when I was seeing seeing the, uh, uh, my my ex this is like a few years ago now uh, one of my exes anyway um so I I went out with a few of my friends and I've known these friends for a long 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 time and generally when it comes to well, they weren't really friends. They were like family friends. You know what I mean? Like, like, like they were part of the family and things like that. And they were just talking to me. I thought normally, you know. Whereas my my missus at the time, she pulled me aside and said, um, "Listen, do they always talk to you like that way?" I was like, uh, "What do you mean normally? Yeah, yeah." Like that. She said, "Yeah, yeah, babe. That that's not normal. Like they're being really snide." I went, "Well, what do you mean?" I went back to the conversation. We went back into the room and back to the conversation. And then I was then I was pulling up everything. Then I was like, hang on, yeah, that's a shitty thing to say. Hang on, yeah, that's a thinly veiled insult. Hang on, yeah. And and I and it just pulled the wool directly away from my eyes. Like I was like I was like, yeah, these 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 are dicks. Why are they saying this stuff to me? Um, you know. <sighs> so I get get what you mean, yeah. Um anyway. With three interviews under my belt for game development jobs, I cleared it with my dad that I could move back into the flat above his garage if shit hit the fan. I handed in my notice and set myself up to leave. The mental thing? I never saw the trainer again or heard from HQ again until I left and had to hand over the keys to the store. Mental. Yeah, they wanted you gone, man. They wanted you gone. They wanted you out of there. They wanted you out of there. They got you out of there, so they leave you alone. That's literally what's happened there. They wanted you out. They wanted you gone. You left. You gave them what they wanted. They left you alone. Essentially. Uh, but hey, this happened a long time ago now, so I wanted to get it off my chest. Uh, more out of amusement than anything. Hope you enjoyed God of War. Cheers. <laughs> okay, so you obviously work for uh, the guys who made God of War. Um, thank you very much for sending that in, man. That is uh, very eye-opening. And if I had a penny... For every time I got a like a story like this, I would have seven pennies, which is still a lot considering. But like at the same time, uh, yeah, it it is kind of depressing. At the same time, it's not not a nice not a nice thing to read when you see people be being mistreated this way. But as I said, and I think it has a genesis in the way that they that they that they operate in the back on the back end of things. Quite frankly, they don't care about niceties. The one thing that the cold corporate world does is that they are forced to act in a certain way in terms of training. Uh, they're so afraid of being sued for the most part that, you know, you'll be able to walk into any training session, give your opinion and have it listened to and have it heard. At least in my experience, anyway. And I've been in some big meetings with, with like, you know, in, in publishers and schools and things like that. that you're always, you always tend to be heard. Because they don't want to piss you off. Right, they don't want to be a grounds for you know, constructive dismissal or for bullying or anything like that. They're, they're, they're so they're treading on eggshells to try and make sure that everybody gets their word in. You know, Games Workshop was not like that. It was basically a bunch of friends sitting around a table shooting the shit on how to sell more models, which uh, you know sounds brilliant to me, unless you're not in that group of friends. If you're not in that group of friends. They don't want to hear from you. They don't want to hear your opinions. They don't want to hear what you have to say. They literally don't even want you in the room. If they could get away with like putting you in a separate room on your own with a book, they would do that. That's the that's the image I got anyway. And obviously the image that this person has got as well, unfortunately. But anyway, hope you enjoyed that one. I will be back tomorrow for some more lore where we will be covering the Death Watch, which is something that I've been looking forward to doing for ages. Love you all a long time. We'll be back on for more Hobby Nightmares on Wednesday. Have a wonderful rest of your day. And I hope you... Have a, a brilliant Monday. Have a good one. See ya. Bye.